From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Coming up, Facebook's founder is at the center of Yellowstone County controversy. We took a grant that turns out that Mark Zuckerberg was involved in. Plus, how this summer's flooding is changing parts of Montana's outdoors forever. The popular lake for fishing and things like that, and it's, it's not really there. For. And bobcats and grizzly stars are ready to shine on Sundays. And good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Wednesday, August 31st. We're so glad that you are watching this morning. We're taking an in-depth look at the recent shuffle in leadership at Billings Clinic. After two years of a pandemic and mounting complaints about the inability to see a doctor, resignation letters are filling up inboxes, leaving more questions than answers. Q2's Casey Conlin reports. The exodus continued at Billings Clinic Tuesday. Now four senior staff members have resigned, including CEO Dr. Scott Elner. Hospital COO Mary Albers and Vice President of Hospital Operations Lindsey Green are the latest to leave. Both followed Elner to Billings Clinic from Centura Health in Colorado. Interim CEO Dr. Clint Seeger has been on the leadership team for eight years and remains committed to this group, though he acknowledges there are challenges at the hospital right now. Has access for patients been a struggle? Uh, I think access is always a challenge. Clinic administration says they have heard more complaints about the inability to see a doctor. The company's website lists physician openings in just about every department. Seeger says Billings Clinic has lost 17 doctors so far in 2022, but hired 40. There are a few departments that we see more transitions in one location, in one department. Uh, yeah, I think that's something I'll need to focus on. Seeger says he had a good working relationship with Elner since the latter started in January 2020. Elner succeeded Dr. Randall Gibb, who was at the helm for only two years and fired following accusations of sexual harassment by an employee. Despite another quick turnover, Seeger remains positive. I really don't see Billings Clinic as being unstable. I think we have incredible people who work here uh, at every discipline. It's why he was happy to take the job, even though it's been a wild first 48 hours. I won't lie, it might have taken a little bit of sleep off of me. Um, I'm just here uh, because I care about the organization. Um, my wife and I are both physicians here and, and we care deeply about uh, Billings Clinic. Now he has the chance to shape its future, at least in the short term. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. Okay, we're switching gears to the weather now. We've got Miller Robson in with us. He's never, all week he hasn't been delivering good news. <laughs> Sorry, we <laughs> just haven't, Miller. It's not going to get any better. <laughs> <laughs> unless you really like the heat. Unless you really like it. Yeah. And I'm bringing the heat the next couple of days. Yeah, we're going to be smoking hot and uh, we're going to get teased a little bit on Friday. We're going to cool down and then the payoff for that is we get record heat possibly no on way. Saturday. Yeah, so a bit of a it. seesaw with those temperatures, but the next couple of days, it's gonna be sweltering out there. Yesterday, our high of 92, a good 10 degrees above the norm. Overnight low, just a bit above the norm as well, got down to 57. Yesterday, pretty calm day, lots of sunshine. A monthly total still under half an inch. Uh, for the year though, we're over 12 inches. So uh, for the month, we're still sliding backward. No rain in the forecast, at least until the middle part of next week, ouch. But for the year, we're still pacing ahead. So we're in pretty good shape there. All right, let's take a look at temperatures out there right now. 62 at the airport, humidity at 43%, dew points at 39. Winds out of the southwest at about 12 miles an hour. Uh, 50s and 60s this morning, highs today in the 90s. And you're gonna see maybe a couple triple digits sneak in there as well as we get hot. We'll take a look at the forecast, including the Labor Day weekend forecast coming up. Yeah, everyone's looking forward to that. Okay. All right, Miller, thanks so much. All right. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And millions are remembering a leader who helped spark a revolution. Mikhail Gorbachev passed away at age 91. His efforts to bring down the Berlin Wall and dissolve the Soviet Union after almost 70 years as a socialist state will never be forgotten. The Yellowstone County Elections Office is facing some criticism for accepting hundreds of thousands of dollars from a nonprofit foundation. The backlash now has the county commissioners changing policy. Q2's David J has a closer look at the controversy and what that money was used for. In a world where all elections are suddenly under a microscope, perception is everything. And that's why this letter to Yellowstone County commissioners wasn't taken lightly. A taxpayer concerned about a $320,000 private donation to the county elections office. We would appreciate complete transparency just to alleviate our concerns as we've seen these things like why did 
the county except 320000 in outside funds. Carrie Beebe wrote that letter concerned not only about Yellowstone County but elsewhere. That same nonprofit has awarded grants to more than 25 other county election offices across Montana. In her letter, she cites the Montana Code, which states, all costs of the regularly scheduled primary and general elections shall be paid by the counties. A Montana law that says we are not to be taking outside funding to finance our elections. Commissioner John Oslin wants to leave the interpretation of the law to the county attorney's office. He says the county sought the grant because the money was needed to fund elections, but he understands the concerns. We took a grant that turns out that Mark Zuckerberg was involved in and the grant was used to pay salaries and help and stuff like that. And, the, and the, what we've done with the grant money was all documented. But the question about whether or not should, we should take private money is a good question. I don't believe that we should. It's a decision that Oslin says is nonpartisan because, again, perception is everything. We wouldn't want to take any private money in the future from the right, the left, or anyone. A sentiment echoed by other commissioners and a policy they now plan to make official with a vote by November. Policy forever banning acceptance of private money for the elections office. In Billings, David J. MTN News. Thanks, David. We're tracking the aftermath of June's flooding, learning those rushing waters all but eliminated to popular lakes. One of them, Elk Lake, is a well-known fishing spot in the Beartooth Absaroka wilderness. This summer, it rose two feet to a single night, jumping out of its channel, then merging with the Yellowstone River. Hydrologists tell us it hasn't come back, and neither has Island Lake. Yeah, the volume of water moving through there um, was, you know, significant enough um, that it basically appears um, eroded the outlets of those lakes. Both lakes were standouts on the Beaten Path Hiking Trail, which is a 26-mile backpacking trip through the heart of the Beartooths. We do have new numbers showing Red Lodge businesses lost up to 40% in expected revenue after the flood. Now owners are facing some tough decisions about keeping their doors open. Leaders with the Chamber of Commerce tell us many are struggling to pay for repairs. A Hardin family is one step closer to justice this morning as charges are now filed in the death of a man killed outside the library back in April. Corbett left hand is charged with homicide, accused of beating Daryl Scout Kane to death with a rock while he slept. Back in June, the victim's family shared their frustration, saying no one is being held accountable. Now Left Hand is facing up to life in prison if convicted. And the driver leading, accused of leading troopers on a high-speed chase this week near Huntley is facing a lengthy list of charges. Levi Johnson accused of felony criminal endangerment, endangerment of a highway worker, theft and fleeing from police officers. The chase started when Johnson was caught driving. 95 in a construction zone. It ended when he lost control, crashing that car, as you see there, in a ball of fire. His passenger is recovering from critical injuries. Yellowstone County Attorney Scott Twido wants to bring back the three strikes law. He is in Helena this week pushing lawmakers to bring it back. Essentially, any person designated as a persistent felony offender can be given a sentence between five and 100 years in prison. Well, Twido says he wants it narrowed down, targeting criminals deemed the worst of the worst. I'm talking about a hardened population of offender that's in that detention facility for that much longer because they're not getting these cases resolved. I'm hoping that that cracks a little bit through the change to the persistent felony offender statute. All bill proposals must be submitted before the beginning of the 2023 session. We do have an update this morning on the transformation of the Stillwater building in downtown Billings. There could be a push to make the building a historic landmark. And it's supposed to come at the beginning of 2024. It's a 60-year-old structure that will house City Hall, the police department, and municipal courts. The city has a $13 million already into that project. Updating those pipes, elevators, and the boiler. Leadership also have some fun upgrades in mind, though, too. We're hoping to have like a coffee shop, sandwich shop, or something like that in the, in the building. Right now, what we've got kind of programmed is a city attorney's office uh, over to my left. Uh, over in this area here. Then we've got code enforcement and parking kind of over on this side, and then municipal court will be housed in the other half of this uh, floor. Some of the building will be leased out to other tenants and city officials hope to get it on the National Register of Historic Places to offset the cost with tax credits. We are learning more about the classified materials recovered from former President Trump's home earlier this month. In a late night court filing, the Justice Department says documents were likely concealed and removed to obstruct the investigation. CBS's Bradley Blackburn is following the details. 
Investigators recovered 33 boxes from Mar-a-Lago with more than 100 classified documents. And for the first time, the DOJ is sharing an image of some of what it found. The court filing included this photo of documents seized on August 8th. It's partially redacted, but shows the clear secret and top secret markings on some documents. The DOJ said the search came only after months of negotiations with Trump's team and after it had been promised remaining documents were stored in one location. But the DOJ found evidence that papers were likely concealed and removed. And while it didn't say who was responsible, the DOJ said, quote, efforts were likely taken to obstruct the government's investigation. These documents have classification levels that go to some of the nation's most closely guarded secrets. According to the filing, classified documents were found in a storage area at Mar-a-Lago and also in Trump's office, where three papers were found in office desks. The new filing is in response to Trump's request for an independent lawyer, a so-called special master in the case who would review documents recovered by the FBI. But the DOJ argues it's not necessary because it has already seen the material. A federal judge is scheduled to hear arguments in court tomorrow. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. The Justice Department also has yet to determine what Trump was holding onto the documents. NASA will try again to launch its Artemis 01 test flight. It's going to happen Saturday. The space agency scrubbed the first attempt Monday after another fuel leak. The unmanned mission is a part of NASA's attempt to put astronauts back on the moon as soon as 2025. Well, the U.S. government is pledging $30 million in aid to help the millions displaced by flooding in Pakistan. More than 1,100 people were killed in those rushing waters. The United Nations is hoping other countries will pitch in. They're asking for $160 million in emergency funding. All right, Bobcat and Grizzly fans are finding new motivation to watch football on both Saturdays and Sundays. Well, five former Bobcats and one Grizzly officially made those NFL rosters. MSU grads Daniel Hardy and Lance McCutcheon are now playing for the Los Angeles Rams. Troy Anderson is with the Falcons. Lewis Kidd is a Saint, and Alex Singleton will play with the Broncos. And former Grizzly standout receiver Samori Toure will catch blasts from Aaron Rodgers as a member of the Packers. Congrats to them.